Hello and welcome to this first episode of a new series of Drishti IAS for Prelims 2021. In this series based on art and culture, we will be discussing important current events from this segment and how UPSC has asked questions on these topics in past few years. Beginning in this first episode, we will be discussing few temples and few important festivals and the important subtopics related to these. The first topic for today is Lingaraj Temple. It was in news because it was being renovated. So, coming on to the important tidbits of this temple. Now, the temple is dedicated to the deity Shiva. So, deity is one topic from which question is asked in match the following type uh, questions. So, but the interesting part is that Shiva here is in form of Hari Hara. Hari stands for Vishnu and Hara for Shiva. So, it represents the unity in the duality of Shiva and Vishnu. Now, this is seen as a symbol of solidarity between Shaivism and Vaishnavism. Now, one reason for it, we know that the deity here is in form of Harihara. The second reason is because while it was constructed by uh, Yayati Kesri, a ruler of Shomvanshi dynasty, who were Shaivites, uh, later constructions were also carried upon by Ganga dynasty who were Vaishnavites. So, these are the two reasons why it is seen as a symbol of solidarity between Shaivism and Vaishnavism. Another important bit you need to know that it was constructed in 11th century because often UPSC has asked questions like list these temples in uh, chronologically. So, you need to know that it was constructed in 11th century. Another feature associated with Lingaranj temple is Bindusagar lake. It is a natural lake. Again, it is associated with the myth of Parvati and Shiva. And this temple is divided into four sections. Garbhagriha means sanctum, sanctorum, where the chief deity is placed. Yagyashala, where the prayers are conducted. Natyashala, the hall of dance. And Bhogamandapa, where the offerings are placed. This architectural style is Kalinga style, which is a subtype under Nagara school of architecture, Nagara school of temple architecture. The important part is, uh, if you have noticed the image which we placed in the first slide, the above sanctum sanctorum, above sanctum sanctorum, the shikra which is here is called as diul. So, this is a distinguishing feature of Kalinga style of temple architecture and this again is an important point. Other examples of Lingaraj type of architecture that is Kalinga school of temple architecture is Raja Rani temple again located in Bhuvaneshwar and very famous Jagannath temple located in Puri. Moving on to the second temple under discussion, Rudreshwar or Ramappa temple. Now, this recently became India's 39th World Heritage Site to be listed in the UNESCO's list of World Heritage Site. And it was listed there in 44th session, which was conducted at Fuzhou in China. The important pieces of information here are, first, it was constructed in 13th century. Uh, remember again, Lingaraj, 11th century, Rudreshwar or Ramappa temple in 13th century. It was constructed under Kakatiya rulers, uh, ruler Ganpati Deva, he had a general, Rechendra Rudra. He constructed this temple. The interesting part is that this, this temple, and this is perhaps the only famous example, which is known after its architect who was Ramappa. So, that is why Rudreshwar temple is also known as Ramappa temple. The deity here is Ramalingeshwara Swami, uh, a form of Shiva. It is located in Telangana. UPSC has also asked match the following type questions, giving temples and the places where they might be located. The architectural style here is Dravidian. Out of the two most famous styles, Dravidian and Nagara, Dravidian is uh, known by certain distinctive features like having walls around the temple and a distinctive type of Shikra. Uh, moving on further, we also need to know something about Kakatiya dynasty. It was founded by Rudradev, also called as Pratap Rudra in 1158 AD. Their capital was Warangal. Now, another important thing is that a port, 
Motu Palli. Now, this port has been asked once in UPSC prelims. So, Motu Palli was the port which is very important and associated with Kakatiya dynasty. And Marco Polo, coming all the way from Venice, uh, has mentioned this port and this pomp and glamour of this dynasty uh, in his accounts. And this dynasty is the one which had control over Golconda mines, which till medieval times had control over the only known sources of diamond in the world. And that is why the Kohinoor diamond, the famous Kohinoor diamond, uh, came from Golconda mines, which were under the control of Kakatiya dynasty. Sultan Gayasuddin Tughlaq in 1323 AD finally conquered this kingdom. 1324, he was returning back from eastern India to uh, move on a Sufi saint of Delhi. Sufi saint said, Delhi durast, Delhi dur hai, Delhi is yet far away. History says he never returned back to Delhi. But legions are not important. What is important is that the other important monuments associated with Kakatiya dynasty are Rudeshwara Swami Temple, also called as Thousand Pillar Temple, again in Telangana, and the Warangal Fort, which was constructed by Rudrama Devi. Another temple which is important this year is Jagannath Temple. The word Jagannath in English comes from this Jagannath Rath Yatra. This was in news because Jagannath Corridor project was approved, but a, sent, a controversial draft which was prepared, which banned any construction within certain uh, area of the temple, the draft was taken back by central government. Why I am telling you this is because this draft was prepared by National Monuments Authority. We have to remember that this authority is a statutory body which was constituted in 2010 under the Ancient Monuments Archaeological Sites and remains Amendment and Recognition Act 2010. That is the only important thing here. Uh, for the temple, this was constructed in 12th century. Lingaraj 11, Jagannath 12th, Ramappa 13th. This was constructed by Anantavarman Chodganga Dev of Ganga dynasty, also known as Eastern Ganga dynasty because in deep south there was a Western Ganga dynasty. And this was completed by Ananga Bhima Dev in 1230 AD. This is also known as Yamanika Tirth. Why? Because Yama, a Dikpal of South and God of Death, even the fear of death is not allowed within the premises of this temple. It is also called White Pagoda. Why White Pagoda? Because uh, along with Black Pagoda, which is Konark Temple, White Pagoda and Black Pagoda, they served as landmarks for uh, shipmen, uh, seafarers of Bay of Bengal. Uh, moving further, Jagannath Rath Yatra is the most important feature associated with Jagannath Temple. In this Yatra, we have Lord Jagannath, his brother Balbhadra, and younger sister Subhadra. They go to their aunt abode uh, in this Yatra, and their return journey is called Bahuda Yatra. So these two rituals. Jagannath Yatra and Bahuda Yatra, they are associated with Jagannath Temple. Moving on to the next temple, Narayan Koti Temple. Now, Narayan Koti Temple is actually a group of small temples associated to Lakshmi Narayan and they are also associated with Pandavas. Now, this is the only temple in the country where we find temples dedicated to nine planets of Hindu astrology and astronomy. And this temple is also mentioned in the ancient text of Kedarkhand. This temple was constructed in the 9th century. So keep in mind the certain chronology of the temples which we are discussing. We have discussed 11th, 12th, 13th and 9th. Moving on further, this was in news because the government uh, included it in Adopt a Heritage Program. The tagline is Our Heritage, Our Responsibility. And what is this program? This is a collaborative effort of Ministry of Tourism, Ministry of Culture and Archaeological Survey of India, along with state or union territory government correspondingly. This was launched in 27th September 2017. Under this program, a private entity or a public sector enterprise or even an individual can take over a heritage project uh, for a monument. Moving on further, we are on to certain festivals. Most important of them are harvest festivals, followed by certain important state festivals. 
Harela festival was in news. Remember the word Harela because there is a similar word Hareli which is for a festival celebrated in Chhattisgarh. Harela festival on the other hand is celebrated in Uttarakhand. It is a festival of greenery, prosperity and environment protection and the word Harela literally means green day. It is celebrated in the month of Shravan or Savan and in this month as we know Lord Shiva and Goddess Parvati are venerated. In this uh, particular festival, five to seven crops are sown in uh, this mountain bamboo baskets and after a few days, after nine days, it is uh, cultivated and then distributed among neighbors, friends and relatives. Now, Harela festival most importantly is associated with Bara Naja system. Now, this Bara Naja system, Bara stands for 12. Bara Naja system stands for 12 type of crops. So, this is, this was basically a crop diversification technique which was followed in this heritage system of agriculture that was practiced in the Kumau region of Uttarakhand. So, this festival also is associated with Bara Naja system. Moving on to the next important festival, Goa Shigmo festival. Now, Goa's Shigmo festival is actually uh, celebrated by tribal communities of Goa, Kunbis, Gauras and Vilips. It is related like other harvest festivals to harvest of a certain crop, in this case paddy. It stands for golden harvest of paddy. It is uh, a symbol of arrival of a spring. Now an important thing about harvest festivals is that mostly they symbolize arrival of a certain uh, weather condition, certain season. It marks arrival of a spring. Three important terms associated with this festival are Naman, Mant and Romta Mail. So basically Naman is the invocation of the folk deities associated with this festival, Mand is the village stage and Romta Mail is the dance performed. So a separate question can be on this particular term or on the set of these terms. Moving on further, similar kind of festival which festivals which mark onset of a new season or are related to uh, harvest is Holi in North India, Doli Yatra in Assam and Bengal, Kamadahan in South India and Shimga in Maharashtra. All of these terms are important because they can be asked directly or in match the following kind of question. Moving on further, the another festival is Makar Vilaku. Now, Makar Vilaku, Makar we know is related to sun. So, this is basically a festival related to thank the sun god or nature for good harvest. Importantly, this is celebrated at Sabri Mala temple which has been in news for certain good and not so good reasons uh, and Sabri Mala temple is in Kerala. Moving on further, different forms of Makar Sakranti. Uh, in the country, in Punjab and Haryana, it is called Lohri. In Gujarat, it is called Uttarayan. So, even Uttarayan is a term associated with sun. Uh, in Tamil Nadu, it is known as Pongal. In Assam, the same thing is celebrated as Bhogali Bihu. In Kashmir, Sion Karat. And in Bengal, a very famous festival, Ganga Sagar Snan, uh, is celebrated. In Uttar Pradesh and Bihar, the same festival is also known as Khichdi along with Makar Sakranti. Next festival, Ambubachi Mela. This festival is celebrated at Kamakya Temple in Guwahati, Assam. In this festival, very interestingly, the fertility or the menstrual period, the onset of menstrual period is celebrated in this ritual called Toloni Bia. Bia is SMEs for marriage and uh, the symbol of fertility Kamakya Devi is worshipped during this festival. Kamakya Devi is one of the important Shakti Peets out of the 51 Shakti Peets spread across the country and it is also called Mahakumbh of the East. Uh, another important thing about Kamakya temple is that it is considered as a temple without an idol and goddess Kamakya, Siddha, Kupchika, Kali and Maha Tripura Sindhuri are uh, worshipped here. Moving on further, 
आज़ादी का अमृत महोत्सव अमृत महोत्सव और हीरक जयंती मार्किंग सेवेंटी एनिवर्सरी और डायमंड जुबली सो so, आज़ादी का अमृत महोत्सव दिस इवेंट बिगेन 75 वीक्स बिफोर द कंप्लीशन ऑफ 75 फाइव ईयर्स सो वी आर गोइंग टू हैव सेवेंटी एनिवर्सरी ऑफ आर इंडिपेंडेंस इन 2022 एंड इंसिडेंटली 75 वीक्स बिफोर दैट डेट ऑन ट्वेल्थ ऑफ मार्च इन ईयर 1930 गांधी बिगेन हिज आइकॉनिक डांडी यात्रा फ्रॉम साबरमती आश्रम सो आर प्राइम मिनिस्टर मार्क्ड the beginning of this mahotsav azadi ka amrit mahotsav 75 weeks before the 75th anniversary which is going to come on 15th august 2022 moving on further a very important festival called hornbill festival why it is important because hornbill is a very important bird for the agricultural communities of nagaland all the tribes of Naga nagaland there are various tribes but all of them have hornbill in some of their very important motifs or symbols associated with their culture so what indian state did in from 2000 onwards a festival is being celebrated in nagaland and it is celebrated between 1st to 10th december and it is celebrated with such pomp and show that it is also called festival of festivals now in this festival the people of naga tribe they gather in a heritage village called kisama heritage village and that that marks the beginning of this festival uh, an important news not related to art and culture per se that this hornbill bird is related to pusero tide family pusero word stands for horn like structure so the species in this family have certain distinguishing is structures on their body for example the hornbill bird has this structure just above its head that is structure is called cask so that is some important information not exactly or strictly related to art and culture but is still important now this bird is not found only in india it is found across a uh, world in africa asia melanesia melanesia is a small region Uh, around australia and new zealand contains four countries includes fiji vanuatu the solomon islands and papua new guinea so nine species of hornbill have been found in india out of which four are found in western ghats now the indian grey hornbill is the most commonly seen hornbill in india another important hornbills are also there not very important from for art and culture perspective but important part is that great hornbill is uh, listed as an endangered uh, bird and it is also a state bird of arunachal pradesh and kerala the other important species from this family from uh, among hornbills are rufous necked hornbill it is considered the most endangered among the hornbill family now the narcondum hornbills which are also found in india the most important information is that they are found only on the narcondum island the volcanic island in the andaman and they are also listed as an endangered species in iucn list moving on further to dhamma chakra day or ashan purnima now ashan is a month in hindu calendar and this purnima ashan purnima is celebrated now dhamma chakra marks the process which began after buddha achieved or received his enlightenment and start giving sermons for helping others to achieve the same so to celebrate this day india is in partnership with international buddhist confederation and this day was celebrated in 2021 now the significance is that as we said this celebrates the buddha's first sermon where at sarnath in varanasi this sermon was delivered to only initial five disciples uh, they were the all buddha had uh, at that time and this this event is called dhamma chakra parivartan uh, and it took place in deer park at sarnath in varanasi this day in other traditions in other faiths is also celebrated as guru purnima it is also de a day dedicated to maharshi ved vyas and it also marks the onset of the monsoon actually ashan is one of the two months of monsoon in hindu calendar 
Now the five ecstatic uh, disciples who uh, heard this first sermon because UPSC has been ask, asking really detailed questions from Buddhism. They were Kondinya, Bhadiya, Vappa, Mahanama and Ashwajit. You just need to be generally aware about these names. Now this day is different from uh, Vesak celebration or Buddha Purnima. This was also in news because our Prime Minister inaugurated these celebrations this year. So Buddha Purnima is related to the celebration of birth of Buddha. Uh, more importantly, uh, that Buddha was born, he achieved enlightenment and he achieved his Parinirvan or death of Buddha. They all happened on the day of Purnima and that is why this is, this is called as Triple Blessed Day. Which day? The Vesak day or Buddha Purnima. Moving on further to a state festival called Thambi festival. It was for the first time uh, celebrated or organized in Kerala and a dragonfly, a species of dragonfly, Pantalu, uh, it was its mascot and this festival, this is state dragonfly fly festival is a part of national dragonfly festival and why it is being celebrated is to educate and inform the public about the integral role that dragonflies and their lesser known siblings, damselflies, play in our environment. Now, this time uh, Thambi festival was, was organized in Kerala and it is organized by a cooperation of multiple organizations, WWF India, uh, Bombay Natural History Society, Indian Dragonfly Society and they were helped by UNEP, UNDP, IUCN and National Biodiversity Board. Pantalu, as we said, uh, is a dragonfly, uh, one of the species of dragonfly and this was the mascot of this festival. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. We'll come back in another episode with another important set of events which took place from this segment of art and culture. Till then, all the best for your preparation.